doesn't the Bible say that God punishes those he loves? And if we're brought up with the evangelical version of God, then that might be something that we just always accepted our whole lives. Well, God punishes those he loves. And therefore, there's always this reticence to fully engage or fully commit because there's a danger that if we get it wrong, if we're not good enough, if we haven't performed well enough, then we might be punished. But actually, it does not say that. That we may have been conditioned by wrong Bible interpretation into thinking that correction or discipline or discipleship is punishment, but it absolutely is not. Evangelical theology shaped by penal substitution atonement, the doctrine of eternal conscious torment, can be used to twist the character of God, whose love, he is love, making him to be an angry, wrathful God who needs appeasing. Now, the reality is God always wants the best for us. So love will always seek to help us correct the course of our lives. God doesn't punish us. He wants to help us to overcome. Now, the verse that's used to misrepresent this whole dimension and uses the word punishment um, is Hebrews 12, 5 and 6. And I think once I've explained it, you'll realize that what we've been taught it means doesn't actually mean that. You've forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. And there's nothing wrong in that. Great. Then it goes on, nor faint when you're punished by him. That's not so great. Verse six, for whom the Lord loves, he disciplines and he punishes every son whom he accepts. Now, that's not good news in my in my opinion that God accepts us as his sons, but he punishes us. So what? how can I explain what seems to clearly say that God punishes those he loves? Well, this is a New Testament verse uh, written to the Hebrews, quoting an Old Testament verse from Proverbs. It's not God who's speaking, but Solomon, and it's also misquoted. So what does it actually say? Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his rebuke. For whom the Lord loves, he disciples. Just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Now, there's nothing wrong in that. That God disciplines us in whom he delights. No, there's no punishment here in that verse and those verses at all. It's not there in the original. So where did punishment get brought into Hebrews? And I think this is the problem. We have things that have been written that are coming from a perspective that isn't God's. There is no punishment in that verse in Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. Now read the Mirror Bible translation of Hebrews 12, 5. The word in scripture that confirms your genesis in God addresses you as sons. That means our origin, our beginning was sons. And we're still addressed as sons. My son, do not undervalue the loving instruction of the Lord. Neither become despondent when you're corrected. And it's really important that we embrace what this is really saying. Because there is no punishment here. And if you look at the uh, original passage, the original passage talks about the relationship and how God helps us. It doesn't talk about punishment. Verse six, for every instruction is inspired by his love, even as a father would discipline his sons with affection, though it might seem harsh at the time. And you know, none of us really like to be corrected, particularly. Um, and it seems sometimes that when we are corrected, it seems we're being got at. But in reality, this is not the truth with God. Embrace correction. His instruction confirms your true sonship. Just as the father would take natural responsibility for the education of his children, see yourselves as sons, not as illegitimate children, children of faith, not of the slave woman. And that's obviously referring to what was mentioned in Galatians. Welcoming your spiritual education together with the rest of the family of faith. This is relationship. This is family. Verse nine, as we've shown respect to our natural fathers in the process of our education, well, 
we may have done or we may not have done, um, but this is how it was described in the verse. How much more should we value the instruction of the Father who, of our spiritual origin, who upholds the life of our design? Now, what that is saying there is our origin comes from the Father. We were birthed out of the Father, and he continues to uphold the life of our original design. He has never stopped seeing us the way he intended us to be. Even if we've got lost along the way and we've gone and done our own thing, or we like sheep have gone astray and sort of, you know, done our own thing in, in life. And therefore we may not appear to be who he made us to be or designed us to be because we've been shaped by the world and life that we've lived. But he has never changed the way he looks at us. Verse 10, in their opinion, they gave us the best possible education during the brief time that we were under their roof. And again, that might be true of some. Um, God has our ultimate well-being in mind. And this is the key. God has our ultimate well-being in mind. So believing that God punishes us can lead to us punishing our own children. And that can be abuse. Now, I was taught in uh, a charismatic church um to spank your children in fact we were encouraged to craft a spanker out of wood um, and use that to spank our children because that was the teaching that we received now if you go along with the teaching you said now i look back and look at occasions where i did spank my children and i didn't spank them in love sometimes i spanked them in anger sometimes i spanked them because i was frustrated with them and sometimes I just wanted them to do what I wanted them to do. But we were encouraged to use a spanker. Don't use your hand because that's to bless. But I'm, my hand is still holding the spanker. So it still hurt. And I now realize how wrong I was to do such a thing. But I did it because that's how I was taught that God taught us and does things with us. Because I had that view of God, which was very evangelical view that God is an angry God and God punishes those who get it wrong. Now, tough love, strong discipline, spare the rod, spoil the child. Those are all quotes of things that I've heard speak when it comes to bringing up children. And here's a quote from James Dodson, who is sort of the American evangelical expert, supposedly on family and children. He says this corporal punishment when used lovingly and properly is beneficial to a child because it is in the harmony with nature itself. Well, the world we live in is not the world that God created. So whatever harmony he's finding with nature itself, I don't believe was God's original intention at all. Goes on to say, when a parent administers a reasonable spanking, well, what's reasonable? That's totally open interpretation. In response to willful disobedience, a similar nonverbal message is being given to the child, which is, it's OK for me to spank you because it's in harmony with nature itself. That is not true. But this is the evangelical mantra when it comes to spare the rod, spoil the child. And spanking is punishment, not discipline. It rep misrepresents God's nature because literally what he's saying is, well, God created this and God created the world. And in nature, we need to discipline our children and punish them when they get it wrong. Now, ultimately, the rod, which they're saying, spare the rod, spoil the child, which was, well, you need to beat your children, otherwise they'll be spoiled. The rod was a shepherd's implement to help direct the sheep, not to beat them with. Psalm 23, 4, your rod and your staff, they comfort me, not beat me, not punish me. So again, we've taken the view of God who as punishing people through eternal conscious torment, all of that nature has then been taught that we then should discipline our children through punishment in the same way. And I would encourage you to look at this whole thing again, if you've got children, and look at it from how God wants to treat us. He never wants to punish us, but he does want to disciple us, to equip us, to help us. God doesn't punish us, but he does correct us and leads us to follow better paths. Of course, he doesn't want us to do things that are going to be damaging to us and other people. 
but he doesn't control us and he doesn't use fear so that we'll follow the good path rather than another path. God's discipline is to help us by giving us an opportunity to discover where we are not in agreement with him. So the whole concept of love has been warped by our view of God being angry and punishing and will punish people eternally if they don't do what he says, which is a completely wrong understanding of love and God himself, who is love. So God loves us and his discipline or discipleship of us is to enable us to learn, to overcome and to grow. That is his goal to help us come into the reality of who we really are. I encourage you to close your eyes and begin to come to that place of rest, focusing your thinking on God, who is love. As you slow down your breathing, as you relax, as you come to a place of rest, and begin to breathe in deeply. And as you breathe in, you are receiving the unconditional love of the Father. You're breathing it into every particle of your being. Unconditional love flows through your being. As you are still, let God love on you in that place. I believe the Father wants to meet you face to face. I believe the Father wants to look into your eyes. Then he wants you to look into his eyes. He wants you to feel his heart, the heart of love. The Father wants to hug you. The Father wants to tell you how much he loves you. The Father wants to heal all our wounds and remove all of our scars. So fix your thoughts on seeing the Father face to face. Let that be the desire of your heart. Picture a door, the door in your spirit, the Father's knocking. You can choose to open the door invite the father in and as the father comes in he hugs you and he breathes his very breath into you maybe you still feel that you're struggling carrying any negative things towards your parents, just hand those things over to the Father. If you're carrying guilt and shame about your own parenting, hand it over to the Father. If you have any wounds, let the Father show you and let him heal you. <laughs> 